AO7. Trackmania Nations Forever is a Formula Racing game, released in 2008. When the game came out, it was mostly known Check as a free multiplayer game that you could play with your better. friends. But nowadays, Trackmania Nations Forever is mostly known for one thing, and that is its incredibly dedicated and competitive speedrunning community. The Trackmania community will go to extreme lengths to break the boundaries on the game's 65 tracks, and no track in the game embodies this better than AO7 Race, where for the last decade, players have stepped closer and closer to absolute perfection. This is the story of how Trackmania players broke the limits on AO7 Race. When seeing the track for the first time, one thing is very apparent about the layout of AO7 Race. There are a lot of walls. For the entire race, you are completely surrounded by walls that you cannot skip or get through, so you're forced to follow the intended route of the track. But to add to that, the track itself doesn't really have any complex parts or tricks. Already in the early days, players quickly understood that there was only one way to go fast on AO7 Race, and that is by driving as close to the walls as possible and pushing for perfection. Let's have a look at one of the very first strong records on the track, a 26.35, set in November of 2008 by the player. It's gonna be one of those crazy shits where everybody race starts out with destroys the game with 14 jump, different ways. Followed by a sharp turn to the right. Demon drove this entire section at full speed, going as close to the walls as he could. Then he set himself up close to the left side of the track so that he could get a good approach into the next turn, where he did a small drift to just barely thread his car through the turn. Now the track continues with a small drop down, where you have to land as flat as possible and also attack the corner, so that you build up speed through the narrowed zigzag part. That was cool. And then the track ends with a final drift to the right, going up the hill and towards the finish rate, where you want to jump as low as possible to minimize airtime. For its time, this was a very strong run by Demon, and he quickly showed that he was one of the names to be reckoned with on the track. For the next four years, the AO7 record only dropped by four hundredths of a second, down to a 2631, also set by Demon. But in May of 2012, a new trick was discovered by the player Raysons. Raysons had discovered that you could do a very short release of the acceleration at the small drop down. This temporarily cost him a bit of time, but he could land earlier and build up more speed across the long zigzag part, and he regained all the time he lost and more before the uphill, saving a few hundredths of a second. And with this, he was able to clock in a new world record of 2630. Demon had held the world record on AO7 for over two years, but when he saw that he'd been beaten by this new strategy, he wasn't having it. So he booted up the game and started playing the track. And after only three hours of playing, Demon managed to tie Race Hunt's record, getting a 2630 of his own. And the next day, he took the record back Jesus with an astonishing 2626. Crazy motherfuckers. This run was shocking. Demon went mesmerizingly close to the walls and drove racing lines so refined it was like watching a dance. Each move masterfully executed with stunning precision. This run was driven nine years ago and it is still considered one of the strongest world records from that era of the game. But three years later, in September of 2015, there was a big hype in the community around AO7 Race. And in that month, Race Hans managed to tie Demon's 2626. This time, he did an even greater release at the dropdown, and showed that there was still theoretically a little bit of time to be saved on the track. Wow. But many other players were grinding the track too and the leaderboard quickly filled up with times breaking the 2630 barrier. When Demon caught wind of his record being hunted this way, he himself decided to give the track another shot. Jesus. And despite everyone else trying for weeks, Demon jumped in and would be the one to optimize the track further, squeezing out just a little bit more time in each turn and setting a new world record of 2625. The track was now extremely close to the limit. Just looking at the run, where exactly would you gain more time? Demon's wheels literally clipped inside the walls on several turns, and for the next while, no one managed to beat the record, or let alone tie it. But two years later, Raysons returned to AO7, and he managed to get this run. Oh 
Oh, he goes wide, so he gets more speed coming off the jump. A 26-25, tying Demon's record. But Race Hunts decided to leave it at that. They were now so close to perfection on the track that although maybe one could gain another hundredth, it didn't seem worth the effort anymore. A07 race was widely regarded as complete, a track where, for one of the first times in Trackmania history, players had reached the human limit. But not everyone agreed with that assessment, because though to most players the 26-25 runs looked perfect, there was one player who saw more potential in the track than others could even begin to imagine, and that player was Pablo GD. In September of 2017, Pablo GD started going for the world record on a 7 race. He quickly showed himself to be a very promising player, getting a 26-29 after playing the track for just a few hours, only 4 hundredths behind Demon and Race Hunts. But he didn't stop there. He kept grinding, and a few days later, he managed to go even faster. 26-27, only 2 hundredths of a second behind the Giants. And one month later, in October of 2017, Pablo got down to a 26-26, now just one hundredth of a second behind the two greatest players in the history of the track. And Pablo wasn't done yet. It would take a while for his next improvement, as it became harder and harder to find any significant time gain. But in January of 2018, Pablo GD got this run. Oh, he went wide on that. Twenty six, twenty five, tied it. The interesting thing about Pablo GD is that not a lot is known about him. He's a very mysterious player, and he generally doesn't interact a lot with the rest of the community in discords or on forums. He my, occasionally my kind of dude right there, servers. just fucking phantom mode chatting, badass. He just plays the game. And you're very lucky to ever see him type a few words in the chat. <laughs> One time Pablo I said hi. I vividly remember in 2015 <laughs> when Pablo successfully did a very difficult shortcut on the track C9. Many players in Fastest Way Only, <laughs> a the shortcutting team, had been trying to do it for weeks. And when Pablo GD got it, nobody could believe it. Everyone started freaking out about his record in the chat. And he just responded with a simple thank you. Even though was known about Pablo as a person, when it came to A07 race, everyone knew that Pablo GD was a name to be reckoned with, as he did something that many other pro players couldn't, when he managed to tie Demon and Ray Sanz's outstanding 26-25. But unlike the others, Pablo wasn't content. He wanted to push onward and prove to everyone what he was truly capable of. Throughout 2018, Pablo continued playing A07 race. And finally, after 10 long months of grinding, in October of 2018, Pablo GD got this run. Oh, he goes like a little bit more straight on that. Oh, he did the the like the screeching of the tires earlier. Twenty six, twenty four, finding another hundredth of improvement and setting an incredibly strong world record on the track. To most players, that was it, the ultimate A O seven run. Perhaps Demon or Raysons could equal his time in the future, but many were convinced that this record would never be beaten again. And the people who thought that were mostly correct in their prediction, but they had forgot to account for just one thing. Pablo GD himself. Because believe it or not, Pablo GD wasn't done grinding AO7. <laughs> he wanted absolute perfection, so he kept playing the track. And on Christmas morning 2018, Pablo gave the Trackmania community this nice present. A 
23, dude. Damn. 26 23. He had now not only beaten the Trackmania legends <laughs> on AO7 race, he had completely crushed everyone. It was a completely astonishing record, and when Demon saw it, he said game, set, and match. GG, and threw in the towel. Pablo was in a league of his own on AO7 race, <laughs> and, and most like, of it yeah, could be attributed grind, to his skill level. Can't but one it. other thing that players noticed was perhaps his input device played a role as well. You see, Pablo GD plays Trackmania with a keyboard. <laughs> Normally you wouldn't think of using a keyboard for a racing game, as it's usually better to use an analog device, like a controller or a steering wheel, that allows you to do smooth curves. But on AO7 Race, it seemed like the track was actually favored towards keyboard players, because the track contained so many sharp corners, where you wanted to quickly switch from steering fully to the left to fully to the right. And this can be especially seen in the zigzag part near the ending, where before the last uphill, you want to go tight to the left around the last corner, use all the space available, and then quickly switch to steering to the right and drift up the hill. This movement is much easier and much faster to do on keyboard than having to move your thumb on an analog stick, and there was definitely a case to be made that driving on keyboard was an advantage. Huh. But other keyboard players didn't even come close to matching Pablo's <laughs> pace, and controller players didn't either. Regardless of the device used, Pablo was the new king of AO7 race, and despite holding the world record by a big margin, he still wasn't satisfied. <laughs> In August of 2019, Pablo got this run on the track. Unbelievable, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. You should check out this vid next. Super close. That was super close. I thought he was gonna hit that. Well, obviously he's not gonna hit it, but. It's 22. 26-22. At this point, it was starting to get ridiculous. Thousands of players had tried to beat the world record on AO7 for years, and despite that, Pablo now held a world record <laughs> uncontested by three hundredths of a second. It was inexplicable how good he was on the track, and how much effort he put into maxing out every single corner, every single movement, to try to reach perfection. At this point, everyone else had simply stopped trying, and we all just sat in awe and watched how you don't far Pablo was to take it. Focus, because you really gotta ask yourself, who in their right will. mind would look at the 26-22 run and think that it's improvable? It seemed genuinely close to perfection, and by all means, it was. But for Pablo GD, who had now played the track for countless hours, he could still see a little bit of room for improvement. So he kept playing the track. Jesus. And one year later, in May of 2020, he got this legendary run on AO7 Race. Dude, it keeps going, bro. Like, I thought it was over three records ago. He took a better jump, it seemed. Jeez. 26 21. The interesting thing about this one is, is that when Pablo got it, he actually didn't upload it to leaderboards right away. Because, in his own words, he wasn't satisfied with it. He just casually mentioned that he got it in a live stream chat room and waited about two weeks before he eventually uploaded it to the leaderboards. The reason that Pablo wasn't satisfied is that he lost about two hundredths of a second to his personal best in the start. But then, he got an incredible ending to the run, getting much more grip in the uphill, and he overtook his personal best just before the finish line. If he had gotten a perfect ending on a perfect start, then the record could perhaps be eternal. But the time spoke for itself. All things considered, this was an amazing run on AO7 Race. For a while after it was set, nothing more really happened on the track. But early in 2021, Demon returned to AO7. His personal best was still a 26-25, driven in 2015. And with six more years of Trackmania experience, 
He wanted to see what he was capable of, and if he could match Pablo GD. He started playing the track in March of 2021, and quickly got many promising attempts, but he lost most of them to the zigzag part, where he could not match the uphill that Pablo had in his record. Demon kept playing the track all throughout April, accruing hundreds of runs under 26.30, but despite his consistently fast pace, the 26.21 by Pablo seemed insurmountable, but Demon wasn't going to give up trying without a fight. Demon had essentially held the throne on AO7 for 8 years, from 2010 until 2018, when Pablo finally managed to beat him, and now he wanted to defend what he felt was rightfully his. He kept playing the track for over a month, and finally on the 5th of May 2021, Demon got this run on the track. Is it? Yeah, it's 23. Yeah. 26 23. Should only two his. hundredths of a second away from the record. Demon was getting tantalizingly close to Pablo. He could feel that despite it seeming unbeatable, he could do it. All he needed was one good uphill, and he could potentially match or even beat Pablo's record. But when Demon got this improvement on the track, Pablo also felt that his record wasn't gonna stand for long. <laughs> So, he went back to the track and started grinding. Oh and Lord. one week later, on the 12th of May 2021, Pablo got this fateful run on a 7 race. Dude, it never fucking stops. Oh, his beginning here is nutty. That's what he was looking for on his last one. Fucking 300 of a second ahead. And he keeps it up. Oh my god. He's gonna get like two on it. Two hundredths of a second on that. Nope, got the one. 2620, dude. 26.20. An absolutely astonishing time. When he uploaded it, the community simply couldn't believe it. One thing was knowing that the run was improvable in theory. If he got a perfect start and matched the perfect uphill his 2621 had. But it was another thing entirely to actually go out and do it. The run was simply incredible. Everything executed to near perfection, with only pixels to spare in each corner, and a great testament to how far determination can get you. Pablo was already the best player in the world on AO7 race in 2018, and since then, he improved the record four more times, because he believed he could go even faster. Pablo didn't just want to be the best, Pablo wanted to achieve perfection, and as far as Trackmania history goes, he might be the player that gotten the closest to doing just that. And that is where the world record on AO7 race stands today. Unlike many other tracks in Trackmania, where crazy shortcut discoveries have completely changed the leaderboards over and over again, the history of AO7 race has been one where the fastest strategy has been unchanged for the past 9 years, and it has been an arena for the most precise, skilled players to battle it out for every last pixel through the corners and every last hundredth on the leaderboards. But who's to say that this is where the story ends? For all we know, Pablo could still be grinding AO7 race, chasing an even better time. Because in Trackmania, it's only when you think you've reached the limit that you recognize that you can still go even further. What's and without knowing what the future holds, right I think saying. it's safe to say that this isn't the end of the story on AO7 race. Craziness. 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 I'm sitting here like two weeks into... Well, I guess I've put in over 200 hours now. Am I going to play Trackmania now? You know, it's actually a really fun game. But, uh, yeah, I don't got it in me to do what those guys do. What they just showed you was a bunch of the same run, right? That would all worked out. That got good shit. And we, you were already burned out on them, right? Imagine how many runs they have gone through. Over just the tiny little fuck up. Oh my god.